Yes, unfortunately, I eat animals. Why do you say unfortunately? Because I'd like to live by my principles, but I don't. But I don't. But I don't. No more. No more. What's happening? It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and The Organic Grill. What's happening? I missed everybody. I really did. I really missed everybody. So uh, let me see. Hey, Tim, hope you're well in Wales. And Little Loser Retsky, I see Steen in Denmark. Um, Nick Black Sabbath. What's up, party people? Party people, it's the place to be. I go to St. John's University. <laughs> Hi, Rap Bones. I'll see you in a little while. Um, Jorge Rodriguez, what's happening, buddy? Hope you're well, man. What's up, Alan? Uh, hey, um, right off the bat, Winnipeg. What's happening up in Winnipeg? Is it snowing there yet? Uh, on a somber note, I want to dedicate this show to two friends of ours that just passed away, uh, Nick Riley, um, who's a kind soul, um, Bob Riley uh, from Stigmata, Murderer, Murderer's Row's brother, and also Patrick Doyle and uh, Bulldog Security, uh, two great guys uh, that just passed away in the last couple of days. So my part of the show, I dedicate to them. And, and uh, I hope that, you know, some of the music that they loved and uh, can just come through. So I, I they will be missed. Um, looking forward to another great show. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Gregory. I, I appreciate Brazil. Brazil's in the house. Where do they see that? Costra. What's up, Brazil? Did you did you see? I had I had Derek on. You know from from uh, some sepultura. It was Keeler. You know. Yes, May. Rest in peace, Doyle and Nick. Yep. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Rest in peace to both. Rest in peace. Yeah, you know, it's a crazy world right now. And uh, so that said, um, a couple of upcoming shows. I uh, just want to remind you guys that uh, the show after this is the, is the photographer's show. And that's with our very own Stephen Messina and... 
Tim Daly, Rich Zoller, special guest Michelle Monona. We're going to talk about uh, what it's like to be a, a, a hardcore photographer, and we're going to show lots, lots of killer pictures. We're, we're sorting through them all now. A lot of killer pictures going to be in this show. Also, the show after that is going to be New York City Councilman Justin Brannon from Brooklyn, who was in the band Most Precious Blood and Indecision, and New York uh, and Manhattan Councilman uh, Keith Powers. Our special guest is Jesse Mallon, who is a proprietor in the A7 and Barry Electric and a couple other places. And we're going to be talking about the future of live music in New York City. Now, listen, we all know we don't deal with politics on this show. We're not. That's not what this show's about. But we got to have these guys on and we got to talk about the future of live music in New York City and what's going on. It is a crisis situation and we cannot fucking lose these venues. If we lose the A7, I am going to throw myself off the George Washington Bridge. I'd be, my world would crumble. You know, I I would be destroyed. Ah, Gregory, my boy, Justin, old friend and great dude. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, man, it's going to be cool. This, this, it's it's going to be a good one. Um, also coming up, coming up, I'm coming up. Uh, no redeeming social value. We got that. We got that in the hopper. That should be cool. No redeeming. And that's uh, Sunday, August 9th. And then after that, of course, we talked about the 50th show. Yo, what's up with the 50th show? Don Airy, Deep Purple, Ozzy Osbourne, Rainbow, Rainbow. <laughs> so my Rainbow Don Airy's coming on the show. Uh, it's going to be great. And there is a New York hardcore connection, which is pretty cool. So we're going to wait. We're going to wait until... He's on here, and we'll talk about that. Uh, that said, that said, let's keep it popping. Let's keep it moving and grooving. Like I said, it is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and the Organic Grill. Hey, uh, actually, you know what? We'll get into this shit later. Let's keep it moving. Let's bring Steven on. Let's do Let's do photo of the day. Bra, what's, what's happening, what's man? Up? How you doing? How are you? What's going on? Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. You're home. This is all right. I'm, yeah, I'm home. I'm, I'm, I'm off this week, so it's nice what to be home it? for- uh... It's Wednesday, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I finally say that a lot. <clears throat> I but wouldn't It's all that. one day. It's like the road warrior. It all blurs one day into the next. Yeah, right. Out there on the wasteland, yep. right? Looking for the right. gasoline. Uh, whoa, whoa, Manuel Depor, in reference to the 50th show with, with Don Airy, didn't his son do something with Sick of It All? You are Ooh. correct, my man. That happens to be the New York Hardcore Connection. That is ah. how I met Don Airy. We will talk about that more on the show. But yes, Don Airy's son, Mike Airy, who's going to be on the show, is connected with Sick of It All. That's how that was. That's the connection here. So very good, Manel. Our people are sharp. Yo, we got sharp people on this that's show, it. man. That's it. You know, I'm what's, excited. I'm excited. Okay, for wait. This. Uh, um, wait, hold on. What's Steve's shirt today? I can't see. <laughs> All right, that's great. That's pretty <laughs> funny, Sarah. Make make Mordor great again. All right, that's awesome. <laughs> you know what my, my shirt is? Uh, what do we got? Let's talk see. about this later. Chain Reaction Records. Nice. Love the Born Again. Yep. Chain Reaction Born Again, baby. Records. Yep. A very yeah. underrated Sabbath album. Yeah, well, that's the Sabbath album that Ian, that Ian yeah. Gill was playing on, right? Yeah. I saw that tour, actually. Me too. Uh, I saw that. And they the encored with uh, Smoke on the Water. The full-size anyway. Stonehenge. <laughs> right. Anyway, 
Let's anyway, keep, let's, let's do keep this. Keep moving and grooving. Let Actually, me good follow. segue, by the way, to this one. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. Fire oh, yeah, already. right? Okay, yeah. wait, I got to find that. Where is that? Ah, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Stephen Messina, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the planet Earth, this is picture of the day. Ooh, what do we got here? Let's 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 give him a minute. Let's give him a minute to uh, to respond to this. All right. Let me get all, some of the banners off so everybody can get a good gander at this. Anybody out there know what this is? Is there anybody out there? Is there anyone at all? And the worms ate into his brain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay, Rex from Pantera. Rex Brown. Yeah. Rex, Rex hopefully not in Crocs. <laughs> Rex. Rex. White guitar. No, that would be a white bass, wouldn't it? That's right. So is that is that is that Rex? That is Rex Brown. Okay. Who, who's behind and, Rex Brown? Right. And that's the question here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a giveaway if you can read, if you can fucking yeah. read, right? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that's. Red Brown? No. No red solar. Wait, 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 hold on. Where did I just see that? No red solar. It's Rex Brown. <laughs> What's up, okay. Rich? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, obviously, this is. Rex Brown, but who is the drummer? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> or is he just saying the drummer is who's behind him? <laughs> okay, is that is that ah, Vinny a piece? Is that Vinny a piece? That's it is. You know, the it funny is? thing is Carmine always said a piece and Vinny always says apathy. That's right. And That's they're brothers. Right. <laughs> right. So tell us so what but nobody's guessing the band name. Everyone, okay, we got who's in it. Yeah. All right. Well, let me guess. Since, since, since you can read, <laughs> Louis Vito, no. Steve Zing, no. Ha. Huh. Listen, since I have a high school education and I can read, <laughs> make a guess here. Would that be Kill Devil Hill? You, sir, get the prize. Tell us, tell us about, oh, here Kill, you go. John, Kill, Johnny got it. Tell us about this band. Kill Devil Hill, um, it was a side pro. I, I don't know if you, you can't even call it a side project because this is long after Pantera's uh, passing. Um, this was a band that Rex Brown and Vinny did uh, with two other guys who were not as notable. Good, good singer, not a bad, not a bad singer. I, I got to see them. This was uh, 2012 at a place called Ollie's Point in Amityville that turned into Revolution, which is still there, and. Uh, it was really good. It was solid. I, uh, it's hard, you know, everything that this guy does will always be compared to Pantera. And Vinny is a legendary drummer. He played on, you know, he played in the, the Dio era of Black Sabbath and he played in Ronnie James Dio's band and just a, just a, a legendary drummer. So it was a really cool thing seeing these two guys in a tiny little club. Mm -hmm. um, the record itself, uh, it didn't really blow me away, but again, it was cool. And I thought the singer was good, but, uh, you know, again, it's, you know, if you're, you're used to seeing a front man like Phil Anselmo or Ronnie James Dio in front of these guys. So yeah. anything they do, you're kind of going to go, well, you know, it's cool that they're still doing it. And I don't think they ever made a second record. I know they talked about it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I think the band's done now, right? I think so. This is already eight years ago. I mean, right. and, if, you know, and I, um, yeah. I have a little experience with Vinny Apis. When I did the Chile Theater Convention yes. uh, in, um, in lovely Piscataway, New Jersey, when, when um, my film, Who the Fuck Is That Guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago came out, uh, we, we had a table. We were in the rock room, and it was like, Alan Roberts from uh, Life of Agony, yep, yep. Michael DeBar, and to our right was Vinny, Vinny Appy, Vinny Apis, and uh, nice guy. You know, we we were in there for three days together, and uh, very a very very pleasant fellow. 
Yeah, that, you know, God, I, I got to tell you, I miss those chillers. And yeah, uh, they'll, they'll come back. I mean, listen. You I, know, it's funny that you mentioned the rock room because uh, Alan was always there, Doyle selling his hot sauce. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, no, uh, he's cool. You know who I met that was super cool there? Graham Bonnet. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He was I really love cool. one of those things, man. Oh, like, me too. It's always like, um, um, what's his name? Um, well, no, you know who was in the room with us too? The singer for The Runaways, Cherry Oh, Kitty. yes, yes, yes. She was in the room with us. Uh, May Pang, who shook John Lennon. Yeah. <laughs> the Lost there. Weekend. You know, and they always have some like real washed up 60s guys. It's awesome. But oh, hey, you know what? Funny. Let's keep it moving. Let's All bring right, Rapunzel on a second. Hey, buddy. Oh, down. Bones. What up? What's nice up, shades. man? How are you? Chilling. Yo. I like those shades. <laughs> those were those look. Are those those look like the who wore, you know who wore those? That reminds me of those Nirvana. Those are like the, the yeah. Nirvana. Yeah, come on, Nirvana. This is the big yeah. split, son. Smells like yeah. kind of splits up in this bitch. Ain't no Nirvana. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Hey, uh, are we ready for? Are we, are we ready for? Um, I'm, I'm the day, man. I got a whole skit going here. All right, let's go. Uh, hit, 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 hit the end of the show. What up, you guys? Rap ready? bones, rap bones. You're on. All right, we're ready to rock today, guys. Check us out. I'm gonna give a shout out to my favorite record store in New York, Generation Records. I just want to show. Sis not on the show today. I'm running four records. I picked up at Generation Records really quick. I got the TSOL. I got the H. Oh, hell yeah. Art. The classic Green Vinyl Murphy's Law. Arf, arf, arf. And here's the connection to the show, so we keep it real. Boom. Yeah. So. Revelation. That's what I'm doing. You know, Generation Records is open right now. You wear your mask, you go in there, you shop all day. Here's my second sponsor pitch. Again, I went to Midtown Comics. Because they got some really good stuff over there. And I picked these bad boys up. Some more Super 7s. Megatron, Optimus Prime. Really clean looking. I got those two. And then I got these two. I believe it's Jazz and Starscream. Those are really hot. And then I had to grab this guy, too, because he's really cool. Remember these? The My Pet Monster. Yo, Reflection is doing awesome stuff. You know, Super 7 is an incredible company. I would hope to work with them one day. I mean that in all earnest. So the star of the day, I always got to have a really big toy for you guys. I just picked these up out in Bushwick. And uh, these are Mexican knockoffs. They're so sweet. You know, this is just solid plastic. It isn't like the actual, you know, that's, uh, who knows who that is? Anybody got any guesses is out there? Man? Or no, um, no, that's, um, that's a cat, the cat dude, right? Um, fuck. Hold on. Let's see here. Lion ho. <laughs> yeah. Lion ho. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I grabbed these two. These are everyone's gonna know these guys because we love. Why these you guys. know? These are uh, it's the same Mexican bootlegs, Skeletor, and Merman. Is that right? Is that is it Lion O? It's Lion O. Yeah, was yes, the other guy. Got it. Jamal got but, uh, it. The funny thing about uh, these He-Man guys is that's also Stinkor. There's a guy called Stinkor. Yeah. And he's got a different sculpt on the belt and everything, but it's the same face, painted different. And everybody loves the skeleton. I mean, I could show Skeletor every time. But those and, are knockoffs. Uh, those are uh, knockoffs, huh? Yeah, these are Mexican knockoffs. And the cool thing about them is people are like, oh, they're all beat up. They actually make them this way. Oh, they right. That's cool. They going on purpose like that, you know? Yep. So that's what we got for today, guys. Cool. Good I'm looking stuff. forward to the show. I got a couple of good questions. And uh, don't embarrass I, our, don't embarrass our guest today, bro. Oh, I won't. Can, can I make one big announcement? Sure, go can ahead. I make an announcement on your show. Go, uh, go ahead. Oh no, no, it's not my show. It's our on show. On the show. On the show. I just want everybody to know that watches the show and, and supports us and you know digs this culture. You know, enough is enough. The city's open. The parks are open. 
Rappos presents Slumming It in the City every Saturday in August. I'm going to be doing an event. The first two are going to be here in my neighborhood, Midtown. I'm setting up the full merch, full flea market style. We're going to have skateboarding. I'm going to be doing an art show. Uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm starting August 1st. I'll give the location out soon. Then at the end of the month, the last three shows are going to be at a location in Bushwick called Second Time Around. We're setting up the back. The store's fully open. We're going to serve hot dogs. It's going to be a fun day. I'm going to be DJing, painting, spray painting. It's a lot. But it's going to okay. take five weeks. It's going to take five weeks to complete this. Episode. We're all on board, buddy. Be about it. You know what I mean. Be, be about it. Be, be here out. now. Have fun. It's going to be a all great right. five weeks in August. I'm going to be doing this. So I hope to see everyone come out. All right. We'll see you in a bit. See you in a minute. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and the Organic Grill. The Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue, featured in New York Magazine, the New York Times, and Veg News. Their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties, and every dish on the menu could be made gluten-free. This year, they're celebrating the 20th anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing clean food. After three months of being closed, they're now open for deliveries. Get in touch with them and order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. And while we are at it, New York Hardcore Comics opened back in 2013 when lifelong friends Debo to Pro and Lee Fraley combined their collections and obsessions for comic books, punk rock, toys, statues, magic, the gathering, and all things horror. The store is located at 117 Main Street in lovely Dobbs Ferry, New York. New York. New York. It's in New York, man. If you want to support them during this pandemic, please contact them via email at newyorkhardcorecomics at gmail.com or any social media channel for an exclusive store package. $20 gets you one of each. Exclusive shop t-shirt and sticker. Marvel Comics Venom number one exclusive to New York Hardcore Comics. That said, let's get it moving and schmoving here. Um, let me just make sure we're all good here. What did I see? Uh, here we go. Rick Brunst, I'm in the waiting room at the doctor, and I'm getting looks, Drew. Bring on Sammy. Okay, Rick, let me change the format of the show just for you. I love you, bro. I don't know you, but I love you, bro. Um, everything else can be swept aside. Let's get the guest on right now. Rick's in the doctor's office, and man, before he gets in and sees that fucking doctor, we got to get, get our guest on today. So, so here we go. You asked for it, you got it. Cheers, big ears. Today's guest is an American rock drummer born and raised in New York fucking city. He's one of the most proficient New York hardcore drummers of all time, having done duty in Judge, Civ, Youth of Today, Side by Side, Project X, Overfiend, Glassjaw, Head Automatica, Nightmare of You, Rival Schools, World Be Free, and now his new project, Constant Elevation. He is also an in-demand session drummer who has recorded tracks with Limp Biscuit and Tech Nine. Coming to us from Venice, California, suicidal. Please welcome our old friend, one of the good guys, Mr. Sammy Siegler. Buddy. What's up, man? How are you? How are you? This is entertaining, dude. What a great show you put together. It's happening. It's like uh, there's this dude, that dude, there's sponsors. It's, it's I'm entertaining. It's exciting. I'm I'm fortunate, man. I, I managed to figure it out early on, and and uh, it's really a community thing. It's community and culture, and yeah. we got we have a great thing going. And I, I'm really I'm so grateful, man. That the, the show's successful. Sponsors want to be a part of it. I have a Patreon page where people are involved and. Listen, I'm 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 a lucky dude right now. Yeah, I mean, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, what's the latest with you? What what happened when the shit hit the fan? Like, what's the latest? I'm chilling. Um, yeah, my shit hit the fan story. I think I it was interesting. It was like late February, and I went to New York to play a show with my new band, Constant Elevation, and we were playing with Gorilla Biscuits and Indecision. I think Mind Force in Long Island. 
So I was there for like, you know, kind of as I typically do when I'm playing in New York, I'll fly in, I'll see some friends, catch up with some people and then go, you know, we had a rehearsal or two, play the show and a lot of hugs, a lot of handshaking, a lot of people. And um, I stayed at my brother-in-law's house on East 7th Street. And then, you know, next thing you know, I flew home and I felt like shit. And I felt like shit for like five days, like in bed, kind of fever, just like the flu kind of thing. Um, you know, so I don't know. I never got tested. I don't know if I had it. But basically a week or two after that, it was like my daughter's school got canceled. Oh, yeah. You know, I remember getting some, we were having dinner and watching the NBA. And it was like the game that got shut down, um, you know, like basketball is over. And it was just, you know, like most people just sort of digesting it and, you um, but you know, like, yeah, it's fucked up times. I mean, I've been having fun, like hibernating with my wife and daughter and just like focusing on some specific shit, but it's, um, you know, I got a beard. I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get back to playing shows. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're a proficient guy. I mean, one thing I love about, um, doing these shows is I really get into, um, research and, and I really do my homework. You know, I don't yeah. just turn the computer on and do a show. Like I really, and, uh, you know, we, we've, We've interacted quite a few times before, and I learned a few things today. You know, so so we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to that. Um, yeah. How did um, how did music come into your life? We're, 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 did you grow up in a musical family? Like, how how did music come into your life? Shit, I think it was Kiss, really. No, but I think um, really, specifically, my dad played drums and my grandfather played drums, so it was sort of it was in there. Um, my dad, my grandfather had a band called the Kingsman. It was jazz, like big band, like 1940s stuff. My dad grew up in New York City and in Long Island, and he was gigging a lot and like doing the whole like right. playing weddings and bar mitzvahs and gigs and hotels and and you know primarily jazz. But so they, you know, they gave me lessons early on, like on a snare drum, just like mom, mom, papa, mom, like left, left, right, right, just That's like awesome. so, so, so. Your dad played drums and your grandfather. Yeah. So That's incredible. I remember, I remember my third generation. Was, yeah. So it's just, you know, that was happening. And uh, my sister was playing, like learning to play drums for a minute. And then she kind of got more into to painting and art. But, um, you know, I think the thing that really connected for me was being able to play in a band. So, yeah, like I got into Kiss and I was like, fuck, Kiss is crazy. This is amazing. I was a part of the Kiss Army. I had the Kiss trash can, all the shit. I was like air drumming at home, like setting up buckets and doing the whole thing. Sorry, I live by an airport. So occasionally there's an airplane. But, um, but, uh, and just like, yeah, like just wanted to be in the music. And then like um, my sister introduced me to these guys uh, who later were in the Skadanks, Alex, Valenti, and Toby, who became Rocker T. And they had a man called Noise Please. And those kids were older and I was like 11. And I think they were in high school, they went to Stuyvesant. 11. And so I was like playing and they would like smoke me up and I'd like get really fucking stoned, like play drums and like learn these songs. But we were like punk, reggae, ska, everything. And they covered Power by Agnostic Front. And that was my first introduction to like New York hardcore. So I was just like baked, fucking paranoid, playing power. You know? <laughs> we played these weird shows. We played on the Circle Line Ferry. They had a thing called Founders Day. For, wait, um, you were 11 years old? I was 11, definitely, yeah. Wait, 11. I have, I have, wait, I think just as a reference, you know, I have, I don't know how old you are in this picture, but you look about, I think you, that's about right, right? Yeah. That's an interesting picture. That's from that movie, The Beat, you know, where they filmed, um, oh. the Cro-Mags were in it. And a lot of people were at that shoot. But for some fucking reason, I got asked to like be in a separate shoot on another day at some weird church. And there's a scene in the movie where they're like kind of going through the audience and there's a, uh, and there's that shot of me. But yeah, I was probably right around that time. Yeah, the 11s. Wow. Yeah. Craziness. So look, so, did you grow up? Did you grow up in Stuy Town? Where did you grow no, up? On I grew up on Fifteenth Street between Fifth and Sixth. So Fifteenth, uh, Fifteenth between Fifteenth, which goes west. No, wait, Fifteenth. The street goes west. Fifteenth goes west. Yeah. Between so Fifth and Sixth. Yeah. Now Alago, Michael Alago lives. Uh, to, uh, yeah. So I know the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, He's two blocks over, but yeah. So yeah. You no, know, it was it was like it was the city, but it was kind of sketchy back then. Union Square Park was sketchy. It was uh, yeah. it was a loft. It was really cool because it was an old factory that this sure. artist turned into these lofts. My parents got in early. Yeah. Um, Todd, 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 Todd Hamilton says Union Square. Uh, Brian says Union Square. Todd Hamilton says across from Xavier. Exactly across from the back door of Xavier. Right. I hated those kids for no reason, really. But um, yeah. <laughs> they would have their fire drills, and I would see them try right. to play with them. Oh, yeah, basically that was it. I went to a school called the 15th Street School for a minute, which like 
in kindergarten, first grade, um, right. which was on between eighth and ninth. But, you know, but then my dad had this business, which was a moving and storage business on West 11th Street between Bleecker and West 4th. And that was this building that my great grandfather bought, Siegler Brothers Moving and Storage. Right. My great grandfather ran it, my grandfather and my dad. But what was cool is that I was able to rehearse there, which was unique. As you know, growing up in New York as a drummer, right. it's a pain in the ass. So we were able to play in this warehouse. Let me let me ask you a question. You're you're lounge. Hold on, that's a good call right there. The Peppermint yeah, Lounge was right around the corner. I was just talking to my daughter about this because right. you know she's there's people like that yell at night sometimes here and and uh, I was like I was like listen, I grew up down the street from this nightclub and at four in the right. morning when it would let out, it was just fucking crazy. I'd lie there in bed like listening to you know the Peppermint Lounge, yep. let out. I got to show you a picture. Yeah, I'm just pulling this up. Wait, Come on, do it. Where is it? The these are pictures. These are pictures that I took. These are and and I and these are pictures that I took from 1981 of the Bad Brains at the Peppermint Lounge. Oh, that's at, at, at that Peppermint Lounge, and then that's really cool. Yeah, I took those. I still have them. And there's another one. I don't know if this is it. Oh, here it is. Is this it? Looks like a great club. I don't think I ever went inside. I mean, the I stage was, was really high. Now you can't. Yeah. I think is that the show? There's a shot. I don't know if I don't know if it's that one. But I'm getting pulled backwards off the stage, and the stage was like eight feet high. It's like that place. It's like that place in. Uh, hold on a second. What's the name of the place in Detroit that's got the high stage? A uh, Harpo's. Harpo's. Yeah. It's like the place. <laughs> Thank you, brother. It's it's like it's like the place it was eight feet high and yeah. you know you get but but yeah the peppermint lounge was on Fifth Avenue so you remember as a kid right around the corner from that yeah there was a Blimpies across the street I would go there and get a Blimpies best I mean that was you know I lived there my whole like pretty much my whole life now you're a lefty yes it was your father and grandfather a lefty so my dad was righty so when I would go and sit on his drums I was like oh drums and I would just you know naturally sit on it and because i was left right. i just played open hand and so that's kind of how i i figured out because yeah there was a righty drum set so it just seemed natural and i started playing but then when i started playing fast i was like shit what do i do i need to get to the floor tom and then let me bring my ride cymbal around right. so you know and then eventually tried to you know become as ambidextrous as possible but um and then later realized that you know that there are people that play like that i think like the dude from but, Dave but you you play you play a standard lefty setup right I play a righty setup. I played lefty on a righty kit. Lefty on a righty kit. It's like Jimi Hendrix playing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I you do play. actually upside down guitar. That's how I, just because I'm always around other people's guitars and I'm not a good guitar player, but I play, 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 play lefty on a righty kit. Wow. Are there any other lefty drummers that play a setup like that? that you I know? think there are. There's a jazz. There are a bunch. Um, the guy, I think the Dave Matthews band dude is one of the big ones. Um, okay. Lenny says he plays what's called left hand lead. Left hand lead, bro. Okay. I'm not familiar with that. Thank, thank you. Lenny. Yeah, but thank that's you. what I do. Yeah. Uh, you know, our show is, our show is, it, it's like a group effort here. You know? Right. Cause you lead with your left hand. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, and I, right. I try and it's cool. It opens up different possibilities because yes, you're starting in a, with different shit. That, that's, that's incredible. Um, so how did you fall? Is that how, like, how old were you when you first went to CBGB's? I think that, so what happened was then like similar was, uh, some of my best friends, I think, uh, Chris met Dylan, who's Walter's little brother. And right. I was probably 12 around this time. And then he was like, my brother's got this band called Gorilla Biscuits. They need a drummer. So this was like 85. And I ended up playing in Gorilla Biscuits and we rehearsed at my dad's warehouse and we would like hang out there and I learned and I was in Gorilla Biscuits and um, right. and we played a show at CB's, I think it was with Slapshot. But I don't know if that was my first time. I used to go to um, the Rock Hotel. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the Rip on 11th Street. And I would go to a lot of those early shows like um, Dead Kennedys and Circle Jerks, Sure, that stuff. And my sister would take me, she's a little older than me. Um, and then I think, my first hardcore show was at the Right Track Inn. It was the Birth of Unity show in '85. Uh, again, again with this birth of, again with this Birth of Unity show. That show was magical, dude. It was just like that was yeah. it. it was on. I spent the night at Walter and Dylan's house, and um, so it was like my first time really in Queens, I guess. And um, it, this this picture here 
is is yeah what CBGBs. I was playing with side by side. I, we're probably I don't know who else we were playing with there, but um, right. that's like 87, 80, right. yeah, 86, 87. So it's like 13 or 14. Right. Um, but yeah, I was at Gorilla Biscuits briefly early on in 85. And so that was, um, you know, my first time playing CBs. But I had a fake ID. I went to play land of 42nd Street. I got the fake ID. That's I right. would go to CBs. Karen that's would give me. She would look at it and she'd be like, great. She's like, so what sign are you? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Like Aquarius. I just like pull some shit out and get kicked out and then sneak in the back. Or sneak in. It, it, see, it seems like it was you and you and you and Luke. You and Luke. Me and Luke, Luke and also my friend Yoko. I don't know if you remember Yoko and his sister mm -hmm. Krishna, but um, no. You know, Yoko and I were in front of CBS when Harley was gonna sneak us in in his drum case, and ended up sneaking Yoko Yoko in. I chickened out. Harley was like, "All right, it's your turn." I was like, "I'm not getting in a fucking drum case, dude." <laughs> With Harley. Yeah. No. He had thrown in the river. <laughs> but uh. But yeah, me, Luke, you know, Yoko, Freddie, like there was a bunch of um, very young kids, man. I mean, I met Amazing Luke, how he young you guys were. He, he was teeny. Amazing. So how does, how do you fall in with, um, uh, it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Side by Side kind of your first like real New York kind of hardcore band? How, yeah. How, how did that start thing, like, background with that? Yeah, my friend Chris met Jules waiting for the tram going to Roosevelt Island and similar kind of thing. Like I got this band called Side by Side. We need a drummer. And so I hooked up with those guys and started playing um, in Side by Side. And and then Side by Side started opening for Youth of Today a lot and doing road trips with Youth of Today. So that's how I met those dudes. And I was a fan. I was like a Youth of Today fan like – moshing in my room to you know break down the walls or can't close my eyes or something and um and then mike judge who was playing drums youth today left to do judge they needed a drummer they were doing some like auditions between like me and luke maybe and a few people and i ended up getting it and purcell and i were really tight he was like my big brother all those guys were older than me and so next thing you know i'm in youth today and i don't know if i was like inside okay, so, so, youth today. So, so hold on moving quick here you like yeah. to move you're a fast moving dude yeah so did side by side end and then you join Youth of Today, or was it ha like what? What happens? What happens? I'm, gonna the, I'm gonna put the brakes on your monologue every now and then for clarification. I don't know the answer to that one. I don't know how Side by Side ended officially or why it ended really, but mm -hmm. it probably ended around the same time. Um, you know, those were big deals back then. When a band member went to another band, it was just like, wow, yeah. you know, what are you doing? But I don't think that's really what triggered it. I think that um, I don't know what fucking triggered it, but it's. Um, you know, it wasn't dramatic, really. It just ended. Um, we did, um, you know, that seven inch and, and played a handful of shows, and and we were around, yeah, probably for like two years or something. But now this is this is the Anthrax. Um, the uh, I think this is the first one, the Nor uh, Norwalk. Um, I mean, didn't the Anthrax play heavy into sort of side by side and, and sort of wasn't that like a, like a real second home to you guys? It definitely was. I mean, I think I really have a lot of you know, love and association, obviously with CBs, but also the pyramid. I think the pyramid Saturday shows, you know, I feel like side by side was there a lot. Clayton was taking videos. There was a lot of like, you know, it was like side by side, YDL altercation, just like, I think the pyramid, there was a lot of love with the pyramid, definitely the anthrax too. I, for some reason for me, I think, you know, youth of today and judge were more like anthrax associated. Um, I mean, side by side definitely played there too, but, um, yeah, those three shows. I mean, it was you know Fridays at the Anthrax, typically Saturdays at the Pyramid, and Sundays at CB's. That's a that's um that's a pyramid a pyramid shot I have here, right? Yeah, that's Who's Walter Walter's little brother. Um, Walter's little brother, what in front of you or no, that's him with the green shorts, and I think he's got like troops on. My oh. friend Chris Burr with the straight ahead shirt, Alex Brown with the Vans. Wow. And that's me, um, and that's cool. The dude on the car has got an old Warzone shirt, which is really uh -huh. cool. I've been Where's thinking. Alex Brown with the Vans? Alex Brown is with the Red Vans, yeah. Oh, wow. Typical Alex oh, yeah, Brown. Of course. Of course. Right, right. God. Oh, and that's Flagneck, too, I guess, in the doorway. With a straight-ahead shirt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. But, yeah, I mean, so Anthrax and, and, and CBs, and so, so you end up in uh, you end up in Judge. Well, ended up, I guess Youth of Today was, you know, so side by side into Youth of Today. Yeah, right, right, youth, right. Somewhere in there, maybe did Project X as just a little a one off project. But then Judge was happening. Purcell and Mike started it. I think Drew might have played uh, initially. Luke played for a minute. And then 
they need a drummer. And so then I ended up doing Judge as well. And, and you know, a, a lot of those bands were overlapping. Yeah. Um, and then later in like, you know, Youth Today broke up in uh, 89, Judge probably broke up around then. And I ended up doing Gorilla Biscuits again in um, 91. And then Gorilla Biscuits broke up. And then we're moving, we're moving fast here. But, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then really Civ. Yeah. So then, I mean, the 91, like 92, 93 years were sort of interesting, I thought, because it sort of stepped away from hardcore. I think a lot of people did. It was just sort mm -hmm. of a kind yeah. of closing of this one chapter. And um, yeah. my friend asked me if I wanted to be in a reggae band called 32 Tribes, which was interesting. It was these kids from <laughs> Unit, the United Nations school. So they were all like legit. The bass player was Jamaican. The singer was from Sierra Leone, Africa. They were all wow. from all over the world. And we played like Nell's. And we would play with HR. We played the, you know, the haunts up in Ithaca and a lot of college gigs. And it was fun to play different music. I started going to, to college because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. And I went to the new school for a little bit. They had a jazz program. But then we started Civ. Oh, I was doing a band called um, Cool Band. It was called uh, Loaded. It was called Engine. And then it became Loaded. And it's so funny. That someone just said, you were in a band in 93 called Engine. Yes. Toured with Into Another. Any recordings of that? It I was good, man. It was Ian Love who played guitar in Rival Schools. And he was singing, although we did have a couple other singers. Um, but that was like a what it could have should have been. That shit should have came out. I've got demos. I thought about kind of releasing some of these unreleased things. I've got a, a song yeah. I did with Mark Ryan, which never came out. And I've got a couple other things that... I'd love to put out 32 drives demo. Yeah, it's a good the red label was amazing. Yeah. Cool. So, but then like even Ryan, Ryan from Ake, I love 32 tribes. Great shows. Sure. It looks like it looks like this band was was uh it's <laughs> it was good. It was yeah. interesting because I was playing at first I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll play reggae, no problem, it's easy. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like I was playing with this kind of hardcore approach. So it was sort of this weird fusion of, again, the bass player was like legit Jamaican, right. but then the one singer was Pakistani. I had this hardcore thing. Like, so we had a, we had a thing, man. That's cool. And um, so what's this? Sammy, didn't the drummer break his leg? Someone break the, a, a, um, the drummers break their legs, bro. Break a leg, bro. Break. <laughs> I don't think Wait, I can didn't 32 tribes play wetlands. We did a lot. That was the thing, oh, wow. wetlands and also the- um, Wetlands. To go back old school New York, it's what used to be the Lone Star. Remember that spot on Fifth Avenue? And, it, and then it the became- Lone Star Cafe. Mr. Fuji's Tropicana. And for some reason, that dude, you know what it was? It was like the spin doctors were kind of happening and like wetlands yeah. having this moment. Yeah. And there was like all these sort of like, I don't know, like Milo Z type bands. And so yeah, we yeah. were- so, Spin doctors, blues traveler, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, I was around back then. You know, it was New York was a very, very um, vibrant place for live music in those years. It was yeah. incredibly vibrant. Vibrant. There was there was lots of clubs and uh, you know bands constantly playing. There was a you know I look back at this manifesto I have from when um, you know Antidote was playing in that era. We yeah. used to play like two, three times a week. Yeah, and like the Village Voice, all those ads, it was just yeah. like, you know, you turn that page to the Village Voice, and it was just like so exciting to see who's, you know, who's at these different places. But, um, but yeah, so they, here, here you go. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Oh shit, Mr. Fuji's Tropicana. Damn, you took it back. <laughs> and I got some stories. So I, I mean, fuck, dude. I used to work coach check there. Wow. From rival schools, and this girl, I forgot her name. <laughs> and it was just so much interesting drama. Um, just there was like just one quick story. There was, I think it was New Year's Eve and they sold these tickets like a hundred bucks a head, like New Year's Eve and it was uh -huh. three stories, like all sold out. It was about to strike midnight. Now, 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 now Mr. Fuji's was the Lone Star, the same building? Yeah. yeah. So when Lone Star closed, it became Mr. Fuji's? I think there was something in between that, but it eventually became Mr. Fuji's. Okay, Tropical. got it. Go ahead. And the girl from the Spin Doctors video with like their manager, like with the crazy hair, yeah. she mm -hmm. also worked there. I think she booked bands or something. But mm -hmm. anyway, I was like, we're checking coats and it's like New Year's Eve and we're just fucking checking coats. And and basically the fire department shut it down at like the stroke of midnight because there was too many people, they oversold it. So everybody wanted to get their coats at once. So there was like a little mini riot. And then um, 
The owners were all cooked up. They called me all that. They accused me of stealing jackets. It's a whole thing. Jesus. Let's talk about hardcore. That's a whole other show. So. One, 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 just, just one little taste here. I love, I love going, into, going into the archive real quick, but here's an old shot of the Lone Star Cafe on, on the corner there. Uh, that, that's, that's out of my, that's from my archive. There was yeah. a Beefsteak Charlie's across the street that's and they gave you free, you had free video games if you <laughs> ate there. And I would just the whole summer sneaking in there, pretending that I was dining and just playing, you know, Defender or some shit. That's my jam right there, Defender. And just, and just for the, just, just so everyone out there knows, this is a shot of Yorma Kalkin from Hot Tuna that I shot myself at the Lone Star Cafe in 1980. There you go. Anyway. Damn. That was a quick pull. That's very good. Listen, you know, um, I'm getting good at. I'm getting like real. I'm, get, I'm getting good at this. It's become my job. Um, you know, so let's. What time? You know what? Give me, give me a minute. Let, let me shout out the sponsors, and we'll come back and we'll talk. We'll talk some Civ, some Project X, some Glassjaw, and some Limp Biscuit. Right? Yeah. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and The Organic Grill. Fryette Amplification is a small company that makes guitar amps, attenuators, and direct recording products in North Hollywood, California. Their gear is used by the Deftones, Helmet, Candiria, Stone Temple Pilots, Powerflow, Antidote, Volbeat, Downset, and many other heavy bands. Not light bands, heavy bands. The brand new Deliverance Two Heads are available now at Fryette.com. A couple of things, real quick. Uh, we got some new uh, we got some new sponsors coming into the game. Things are going to change here. I know everybody's used to what we have, but we've got some interesting sponsors coming in. In a couple of shows, we're, we're going to work them in. A couple people are leaving. Uh, a sponsor's leaving. A couple uh, new are coming in. First new one coming in is Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards uh, from Denver, Colorado. We're super stoked on them. They have a great store. They got a little record label and skateboards. We're going to do cool stuff with them. That's Chain Reaction Records. That's the shirt I'm wearing today. Chain Reaction Records and skateboards in lovely Denver, the Mile High City, Colorado. The other new sponsor we have, get a load of this one, is the Texas Silver Rush. Okay? You're, you're thinking, wow, what the fuck? The Texas Silver Rush? What's going on here? Yo, this is Vinny Stigma's cousin, and he's in Texas, and he's a jewelry maker, and he loves New York hardcore, and he wants to sponsor and be a part of the show. This guy is super cool, um, and it's Vinny Stigma's cousin. So we're, we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is coming into play probably within, it, within the next couple of shows. While we're here and while I'm bullshitting, I want to announce – Two upcoming shows. Uh, first off, coming on the show. Here we go. Hoya Rock is coming on the show. Let me get rid of that banner. Hoya Rock coming on the show, August 2nd. Episode 47, Hoya Rock, Madball, Hazen Street, and Demise. So keep an eye out for Hoya Rock. And also, the show after or before that, we got another, another drummer, another lefty drummer, apparently, Mr. Todd Friend from H2O is coming on the show. So lots of cool stuff. You could you could see you could see the new uh, the new logos on the flyers, but uh, lots of cool stuff coming on. Yes, fuck yes, Hoya. Yep. Hi Sarah. I hope you're well. Yes, Hoya. And uh, you know what what else? What else going on? I got everybody. Uh, yeah, everybody gets. Yep. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. In the meantime, also, excuse me, if you didn't already know, if you didn't already know, I'm going to tell you about the Patreon page. And check it out. There's lots of stuff. I just put up, I just put up a couple things. Um, I put exclusive content on there that will not be on the internet. I'm going deep into my archive. Uh, I just put up a little private show. We're, we're doing private shows on there, and I just did a, a real short one. Um, I put a, uh, an outtake from the Take Elitist video that I did on there. There is an outtake of my John Lydon from the Sex Pistols interview that I did for 
Who the fuck is that guy? The Fabulous Journey of Michael Lago, which you can watch on Netflix right now. I also just put a Warzone, never before seen Warzone 1983 show on there. And I think just the other day, I put up a whole set of a band called Psychic Orgy, which was an interesting band. Uh, it was from, it's from 1993 with um, members from the Crumb Suckers, the Cro-Mags, and who else? It was and Carnivore. It's a real interesting band. It's all on the Patreon page. Go check it out. There's different tiers. That's the support that makes this show happen. So go check out the Patreon page. There's a $2 tier, a $5 tier, a $10 tier, uh, which in, in each tier, there's different sort of rewards. Is that, is that right? And uh, there's, a 20, there's a $25 tier. So uh, what's this? I'm going to have to catch up on the Patreon. Been getting behind. Yeah, check out the shit. Listen, I'm putting shit up on the Patreon page. You fucking Patreons better fucking watch it. Um, yes, join the Patreons, you cheap bastards. Um, no, listen, I was wrong. The, the Warzone shows from 1993. I apologize. It's not 83. Yes, Johnny, you're on, you're on Patreon, and I appreciate it. Chucky, yep, top secret stuff. If you ain't down, you won't see the cool stuff on the Patreon page. Yeah, join the Patreon army. Uh, it's really my conduit, and we have a dialogue. We talk a lot. Uh, private shows and all kinds of great, great stuff. So check it out. There's the Patreon page. Just go poke around. Go check it out. Um, yes, Lenny, we know you do PayPal. Yes, we know that. Oh, my bro. Yo, Evan Stone checking in. My brother, literally my brother, Evan Stone, who is the cinematographer on the uh, Discovery Channel show Expedition Unknown. And he is right now, he's out. In Washington, uh, the state of Washington, I showed you that car smash up from the other day when they hit a deer. Um, but I hope you're well, bro. Uh, give me a call. And yo, dad wants to see the edit, bro. So, you know, call fucking Stan and find out what's going on. We want to see the, the new the cut of the new film, please, bro. Um, so there you go. Yeah, man. Um, there you go. Uh, there's even a tier where you get to sleep over at Drew's house. <laughs> All right. Now, now we're having fun. Um, yes. And there, there is a, um, I do these things called legacy films, which we're going to talk about at some point. I did one um, about, um, for my dad, uh, about my dad, uh, Arnie Stone. Boom. That's on the Patreon page. Lots of cool shit. So enough of me going on about the Patreon uh, page. Let's get it off. Let's get it off. Let's get it on. All right. Let's get our guests back on. Mr. Sammy Siegler, what's happening? Dude, shout out to your brother. He lives down the street from me, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'll keep an eye on his uh, house. There's about 200 <laughs> homeless people camped out there right now. But Bro, they're right across the street. They're right. They're, that's fucked yeah. up because, you know, he's been there a long time. And I remember that spot there before they sort of made their way over there. And it was always sort of like. A, a big open area, like it's a golf course, like you know. But it's also, golf course. there's a huge homeless crisis in California, in LA, and probably a lot yeah. of places. So yeah, it's um, it's kind of crazy, but um, but yeah, the different tiers. I'm into that idea of like the mega tier, like a you know. Oh, here it is. Wait, Dylan Cooper, what can we get for five hundred dollars on Patreon? I'm into that kind of Dylan, shit. Dylan, kind of five hundred dollars on Patreon, um. Whatever, bro, whatever you want. You can come over and punch me in the face. I'll come over and punch you in the face. I'll have sex with your girlfriend or your wife. Um, you can watch me have sex with anybody you want. Listen, $500, bro, we can work it out. Believe me. <laughs> All right. Enough, enough, uh, enough silliness. Um, let's talk about, um, and by the way, everybody out there who has questions for Sammy, hang tough. Uh, we're going to get into some questions pretty pretty soon. Um, yeah. Fifty bucks a question. <laughs> you can watch me have sex with whoever you want. <laughs> oh right. Oh wait, here's a good one. Uh, for a thousand dollars, will you do the deer hunter Russian roulette scene with three bullets? I say Mao. I, I say Mao. <laughs> Look, man, you know. I want to make that thing from Flash Gordon where, like, you put your hand into that fucking thing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I still think about that. Yeah, man. 
Greetings from Poland. In the middle of all this, greetings from Poland. Hey, man, good. You Shout know. out to Poland. Hey, I'm not gay, but $500 is $500. Woo. Listen, we, one thing for sure, we have a good time on this show. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, Civ and, oh, yeah. and, and like sort of my perception of it. Uh, and and you can uh, steer me in the right direction is, like you said, there was a moment there where things sort of, a lot of the bands kind of shut down and then kind of you guys came back with Civ and you were signed to a major label and it was sort of a, a really uh, a, a good time, right? Yeah, I think the reoccurring theme of all this shit and, and a lot of bands is like, and even this new band I have now, it's like you go into it with just like real like, um, you know, just kind of like, let, hey, let's let's write a song. Let's write two songs. Let's yeah. put a demo out. Let's put a seven inch out. There's no real fucking lofty plans. So Civ was sort of similar. It was Walter, you know, Charlie and myself just, you know, sort of fucking around like, shit, we should do something with Civ. He's Civ. He's great. Like, Gorilla Biscuits have gone. People want to hear from Civ. Let's just call it Civ and we'll do this thing. And Walter wrote this song, uh, Can't Wait a Minute More and Etu Brute, and the idea was to do a series of seven inches, like singles, like singles yeah. going steady kind of kind of thing. And yeah. that was really it. But we had to talk Siv, the dude, into doing it because he was not into the idea of having a band named after himself. And I think we might have made T-shirts behind his back and said, like, here's the shirt, we're a band. And, and it just sort of snowballed. But um, it, it really just started with, like, let's have fun with this thing and we'll do these – fun little art projects, these little seven inches. Right. And like what happened is just, um, I think somehow we were like, yeah, we'll make a video. Just our, our friend Marco Siega, who's a director, right. um, was in Bad Trip, was just like, yeah, let's make, a, let's make a video. I'll cash in on some favors. We'll do a video. And we kind of put, put, put together some money and some favors. And we did it. And Mike Gitter, who was doing A&R at Atlantic at the time, was at the yep. video shoot. And it was just that time where like, Green yep. Day's all of a sudden selling millions of records, as is The Offspring, and like punk sort of exploded. So every major was like, we need our punk band. And, you know, I think Sick of It All got signed to like East West or whatever, and Into Another got signed, and Orange Nine got signed. Biohazard, Biohazard got signed to Warner. Everybody Warner. did. So it just made sense. And it was really funny because we got signed and Can't Wait One Minute More started to get like radio play. And so we actually had to write an album like <laughs> in three or four weeks. So watch wow. Wrote, wrote a record and we all rallied together and um, did it down at Don Fury's and basically made um, Set Your Goals and just it went out and then we just started touring and it really like, you know, next thing you know it became a buzz clip because again, that was the climate uh, at the time. And next thing you know, you're playing on tour with No Doubt and then we got to open up for Kiss at Madison Square Garden because it was just a different time and um, which is fine for me because I'm like into doing different shit. Like I love... Yeah music and I love playing drums, but, and I love hardcore, but I don't really want to play fucking CBs for 30 years straight. Like I like, okay, now we, you know, Sib went to Australia, Sib went to Japan. We played in fucking yeah. Hawaii. We did some weird shit. That was fun. That's, 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 uh, I did, I did not know that that was sort of the timeline and that that's incredible that, that you sort of, let's do this one little thing and then, Hey, we need a band. You know, now we got to write a whole record. Yeah, um, I, I like I like is I remember seeing Siv getting interviewed by Kennedy on MTV, and I was like, "Am I taking crazy pills?" Dude, we hosted 120 minutes, I think, and That's um, awesome. it's cool. So we just were making. I think we were just too many inside jokes. We would just fuck around a lot of. But yeah, um, but yeah like just it was a weird time. I think or, or or an interesting time. You know, when again, like Green Day and Offspring really just broke it open. Where it's like, you know, everyone was like, "Fuck." You could sell millions of records if you get it right. Here's an interesting one. Did you ever think your song would play in Major League Baseball during pitching changes? Yes, always. No. Um, no, great. I think what was cool was that it used to get played at the Rangers game. So, and I grew up yeah. as a Rangers fan. And um, so when they would come on the ice, they would, they would play it. We later got to play this show with Kiss. So we got up there at Madison Square Garden, us and Kiss, and – we're playing fucking hardcore songs. It's like reverberating around the garden. It sounds like absolute shit. It's so and funny how, how everything, how is it opening for Kiss? Yeah, Everyone's like giving us the finger like, boo, fuck you, we want to see Kiss. I don't blame them. It's, I totally get it. But yeah. when we got to play that song, Can't Wait a Minute More, they were just like, fuck yeah, man. And they fully got it. And it ah. was it was good. We Thank God we had that that Rangers connection. That was, was Walter in Civ? 
he was in quicksand at the time, which was pretty yeah. full time. So he yeah. he couldn't really. I mean, he would have been if not. But um, right. You know, he would jump up and play whenever he could. He played a couple full sets with us. But really, he was like, you know, kind of getting into. You know, he's a songwriter, so he was getting into songwriting and producing, and then you know, and and has a real connection with us and Siv, and um, so it just made sense. I mean, Walter's a talented guy. I mean, he. Yeah. He's, I mean, you. You. I mean, we're getting down the line here, but. You've been in multiple bands, multiple bands with that guy. I mean, he's a very proficient songwriter. He is. I'm trying to shake him, but he keeps he keeps coming around. No, just kidding. He's uh he's great. He's um, it's cool playing with him in different ways too. Like in Youth of Today, he plays bass, and he's a sick fucking bass player. He's right. really good. And then you know, obviously he's a good singer, and he's a great guitar player. And it's just um, it's cool when you can go deep with people. You know, yeah. whether it's a your girlfriend or whether it's a music thing or an art project or some shit. Cause like, you know, we go fucking deep. We've had good times and bad times and, and been able to explore shit musically. It's cool. Absolutely. How did um how did uh the glass straw thing? I'm I'm and I'm just sort of I th I think I'm getting the chronolog chronologically getting it kind of right. But like how did the glass straw thing come around and and wasn't head automatica with a couple of guys that were in Glassjaw? Yeah, the Glassjaw thing came, um, it's sort of linked because Mike Gitter is sort of the, the conduit to it all, you know? Um, Ross Robinson, the producer. Oh, yeah. Who did, like, at the drive-in, he did Lip Biscuit and Slipknot. And, I see, that's and, the connection. And he had a label deal through Roadrunner. Mike Gitter was an a &R dude at Roadrunner. Right. They were going through some demos. They stumbled upon Glassjaw. And Ross was like, I like this band. I want to fucking put them out. Started doing pre-production didn't like the drummer for whatever reason, fired the drummer. Cause that's, you know, I think, yeah, just didn't, he wanted to, someone else to play drums. Mike recommended me. I went down there and all of a sudden, like from, I, you know, I was always like the baby in all my bands. I'm a few old years older than those glass show guys. So now I'm like the older dude, I'm coming in, I'm replacing their friend. They're like a little bummed out. And, but I'm in and we start going song by song for about 10 days through pre-production and it's like, I get the hardcore connection, but it's also just different. You know, they're Long Island kids. It's younger. It's got this yeah. other fucking thing to it, which, you know, I appreciate it, but I didn't, it was just a little bit different. Um, and then we were like, Ross was like, hey, we're going to go to California and record this record. We went up, we flew out to LA and I was like a hired gun. So I'm getting paid. I'm in California. I'm with this band. We're actually on this ranch at the Moody Blue Zone. It was like the 60 acre ranch, 60 acre ranch called Indigo Ranch. Wow. And we start recording. And the band's manager, his roommate was my wife, is my wife, or was my wife, is my wife, old roommate. And so she comes in, we meet. So now I'm, I meet my wife. I'm getting paid to play on this fucking record. It was a really magical time. That's we, awesome. We made this cool record. It came out, and um, you know, I think it really kicked off this whole other like, yeah, screamo Long Island kind of scene. And um, but, and it was fucking awesome. Except I was doing rival schools at the same time, and I kind of had to choose. And because I have all that history with you know, Walter and Cash and Ian and just music was a little more chill and I, I wanted to do Rival School. So I, I ended up doing that. Um, so that was kind of the, the glass show thing. But later, later I ended up doing Head Automatica, more like a fill in. It was really Larry's band. I, um, yeah, right. I saw that. You yeah. know, I think Larry is, is the dude. I, that was more of like filling in kind of towards the end, played some shows. We did record a record called Swan Damage, which never came out, but it's I have it. It's good. The um, the uh, rival schools. Yeah, explain explain what that is, how that came about, and yeah, I think it was um, oh, I think like Walter did Moondog, right? So he was doing Quicksand. He wanted to do something different. He did Moondog, and I actually played one Moondog show at ABC No Rio, but it was like Sergio, Tom, and Luke for the most part, I think, and um. So for, from, for whatever reason, Moondog just kind of, oh, and then he did World's Fastest Car for a little bit. So it's like Moondog, it's World's Fastest Car, and that somehow turned into Rival Schools. And Walter had was signed already to um, Polydor, which became Island. But he, he signed with Polydor, Quicksand, Quicksand yeah. signed with Polydor. And they were just like, dude, we're down, like, we're going to sign your new band, Rival right. Schools, we like it. And um, so we, you know, again, we just started with uh, – a song, you know, accept a compliment, I think was our first song, which was on some comp or something. And, and, uh, we made United by Fade and it just like, it was just, I don't know, again, it just naturally progressed into this other thing. 
um, which was cool. And it really took off in the UK. So we were going to the UK a lot. Um, did I play World's Fastest Car? No, I did not. There you go. I think I did for like, I was going to play on the record. They were going to do something and then it, it ended up disappearing. But uh, we shared a rehearsal studio together at Funkadelic. That's Head cool. Automatical used to rehearse at my studio around 2005, seven. Larry was drumming. I would have totally fanboyed out if Sammy walked in. There yeah, you. it was later. I mean, again, Larry, I think Head Automatica like started more with Dan the Automator. It was program stuff. And then they had this other shit. But, um, and Larry is a beast. He's great. Um, but yeah, it was just later. And so um, I ended up kind of filling in for that. But, but Rival Schools was cool. You know, I, I wish that, you know, we sort of never kind of took this long hiatus, but we took a pretty long hiatus, about 10 years. Then we got back together and recorded pedals. And we have this sort of uh, rarities thing called Found that's out. You know, we talk about doing shit. We've got a bunch of songs written that we've we've never, um, yeah, that are sitting there. So we'll see. And, and who's that? That's you, Walter? Cash Tolman, who played bass in Iceburn, and mm -hmm. uh, a.k.a. Utah Slim. He lives in Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. And then Ian Love, who um, was in Burn, and Ian and I were in Loaded and Gin and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, Ian, Cash, Walter, and myself. Has that lineup always basically remained the same in that band? It, it, Ian left for a little bit. He came back, and then he kind of left again, and we had our friend Matt White filling in. Oh, and then we did actually, when Ian was gone, we had Chris Trainer from oh, yeah. play for a little bit. And Chris did those recordings, which became found, which is pretty cool. It's, it's interesting to hear. Um, you know, it's interesting, like, when you just change that one fucking element, how a band yeah. can shift, you know, like. For sure. Sammy Hagar to fucking David Lee. Right, right. Um, so is the Ross Robinson, the producer, I assume – He's the connection that got you on the, in the Limp Bizkit uh, camp. And he got me all the nookies, man. Tell us a little bit about that experience and how the call came in and recording. Yeah. I mean, I haven't done a shitload of session stuff, really. I think I was always more of a band dude. I like the idea of like, we're in this together. We're a fucking band. If we, you know, sink or, or, uh, or swim, whatever, like, let's, let's see what happens. But I'm also always up for, you know, an adventure and, um, my friend hired me to play drums on a, a band called A Static Lullaby. And so I flew to California, like session dude, to play on this record. Pretty cool, crazy kind of, I guess, screamo record. And um, while I was in California, Ross was who I stayed in touch with. Ross was like, hey, dude, what do you think about the LB? And I was like, what's the LB? He said, Limp Biscuit. They want to make a heavy record. Wes Borland's back in the band. The drummer's kind of having a rough time. Do you want to do it? And I was like, you know, sure. Again, like I'm up for... My whole fucking thing is like, have your hook in the water. You, that's the only way. Yeah. Um, unless people are assholes, like I, I'll, uh, I'm open to it. And I went to try out and would meet the dudes, and it was cool. It was like, you know, Fred was there. Fred Durst. He's just like, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, you and youth today, and I was like, yeah. He's like, I saw Gigi Allen once, and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> but, you know. Anyway, he ended up being really cool. Is that, is that somehow? Is that the you know that infamous Gigi Allen Youth of Today picture? Yeah, that was before my time, but yeah, um, I don't on. know. That could have been the show that he was at. I think there was something. Um, no, I don't know. I don't think it was a Youth Today Gigi Allen show. I think he was just making that general connection of uh, of punk or something. But um, but I ended up getting it, and it was great. And I'm a you know Fred was cool, and they were all really cool, and. Um, yeah, I think that's at NYU. I feel like that's what those dudes told me. That is, that is. Every time that picture goes up, it 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 just people just it, it, it's like when worlds collide, you know. Yeah, there was a story of like Gigi throwing shit at them, and they were they were hiding. Yeah, it's like how could Lee Harvey Oswald shoot President Kennedy? How the fuck could Gigi Allen? You know, it's just the, the human mind can't comprehend it. You know. Yeah. I remember I lived on Mulberry Street for a little bit. And I was watching the Gigi Allen documentary Oof. and his brother Merle was yeah. being interviewed, but it was being done from the roof of my building where I was living on Mulberry Street. And I remember thinking like, fuck, does Merle Allen live in my building? That would be so psychedelic <laughs> to like run into him in the elevator or something. That's funny. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, so just to, to, yeah, to yeah. the nookie real quick was like, it was a fun psychedelic spirit. We, we went up north to Marin County, beautiful studio called The Site. On like oh, that's, a that's, ranch. that's beautiful up there. It was nice. They had a huge house in yeah. San Rafael. They gave me the master bedroom. Like really nice dudes getting paid to, to play music. And the music was fucking really good. We were writing a song a day. 
And then eventually shit just kind of derailed and it sort of fell apart into this very weird EP. But, um, and then I was in the band for a day. I was out of the band the next day. I mean, they were having a hard time because yeah. John Otto's their boy. And, and I think they wanted to make that work, which they did. And, mm -hmm. and I get, but um, it was, it was a cool experience. It was fun. And, uh, and, and the tech nine thing. That was also Ross. Like I yeah. think right when I moved to LA about 10 years ago and Ross hit me up and said, and, and Wes Borland was like, Hey, I'm doing this thing with tech nine. You know, do you want to play on it? And I was just, again, just like, sure. Yes. I don't know much about tech nine, but like, let's fuck with it. And so went to Ross's studio and tech nine shows up and he had like a Jason mask on and someone had thrown out like a couch on Venice beach and he's sitting there on this couch with some girl that he met in Vegas, like the night before with this like Jason mask on, it was really trippy, but, uh, <laughs> It's a weird fucking record. Um, there's a song called like, The Hiccup, which is pretty wild. I remember playing that, but wow. it's, I guess it was like rap rock or something. Yeah, things yeah. things things get uh, things things get kind of crazy. Um, hang with me a second. Let me do a shout out. When we come back, we'll take some questions, all right? Cool. Okay. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, and the Organic Grill. I uh, hope you're enjoying the show today. Our guest is Sammy Siegler, very proficient left-handed left-handed drummer. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of shows coming up uh, this this weekend. We have the photographer show with the Worldwide Hardcore Firing Squad. Uh, then Wednesday, a week from today, we have the CBGB's Caucus coming on the show. Justin Brannon and Keith Powers, as well as our special guest Jesse Mallon. And we're going to be talking about the future of live music in New York City. So please come be a part of it. Be a part of the dialogue. It's important. Uh, after that, uh, we got Hoya Rock from Madball, Hazen Street, and uh, Demise coming on the show. That's going to be great. And, of course, Todd Friend from H2O is uh, after that. And then the 50th show is August 12th with Don Airy. A uh, couple other things coming after that. We got a couple of things I don't really want to mention, but uh, let's just, you know what? Fuck it. Let's mention them. We're trying to lock down Charlie from Gorilla Biscuits. And we're also looking to do the show with Phil Caivano from Monster Magnet, uh, Blitzbeer Murphy's Law. So that, 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 stuff, that stuff is in the works. Um, Mark Tolch, I'd like to see a show dedicated to Rad New York hardcore clubs that are not around, probably other than CBGBs and dope rooftops of New York City. Yeah, man, sure. Listen, that makes sense. Um, Patreon, please join it if you haven't. Uh, there is the there is the the banner. It's your support is what makes this show happen. It doesn't magically happen. Shit doesn't magically happen. Your support is what makes this show happen. So please support this show. It's that simple. And watch some of the cool shit that I'm putting up. And the Patreon thing is like a community, its own community now. In the end, it's going to be its own sort of like private channel where I'll be channeling things. So there you go. The, Patre the Patreon channel. Everybody else, um, what, this isn't magic? Well, it kind of is in one way. Um, there you go. So let me think. Am I covering everything? New sponsors, uh, uh, new sponsors coming on, uh, making their way in. There'll be a formal switchover. Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards. We want to welcome them and Vinny Stigma's cousin at the Texas Silver Rush. This is going to be a lot of fun because that means we're going to get Vinny Stigma on the show a, a couple more times. I want to thank a couple of uh, of patrons that have joined on the Patreon page. Rob Browning, Mike Ducks, Victor Mogolensky, Derek Moomin, Mary Balch, Jamal Harrison, Carlo and Samo Jr., Slimy Slim, Mark Tulch from Canada, Jerry Farley, uh, Malte Mueller, Chucky Perez, Mucky Chris, Whitney Crawford. Thank you, Whitney. Uh, Jurassic Punk, Bananas Pandocalypse, Matt Binks, Johnny Jonas Keating, Jeff Schultz, and Milton McPherson, who actually sang in... Um, the band that I just posted on Patreon, Psychic Orgy. I think he was actually in the Bad Brains for a minute. Okay, other than that, 
I think I've covered everything and everybody. Um, Psychic Drew channeling the spirits of Sid Vicious and Frank Sinatra. Okay. All right. Uh, any questions? If you have any questions for our guest, Mr. Sammy Siegler, post them up now. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some questions and stuff. A uh, couple questions with him, and uh, let's bring him back on. Hello, <laughs> hello, Sammy. Hello. What's up? Um, we'll do some questions, and you know, we'll, we'll poke around because I want to talk to you. Let's do a couple questions, but I want to talk to you about your involvement with Revelation Records these days. Uh, apparently, yeah. uh, you know, you're doing stuff with Jordan over there, and uh, and I want to talk about Constant Elevation. Yeah. And also, you're managing a couple bands too. Multitasking. So, let's start with this. There was a Warrior Soul video that you appeared in. What's the story? That's a good question. It is. Um, the, so I was in Judge. We were down at Don Fury's, probably like recording, um, you know, that EP, Storm 2. Don't for, I forget this time era type shit, I think. And Don knew the guys in Warrior Soul, um, Corey Clark and these dudes. And Warrior Soul got signed to Geffen. And it was yep. like a big fucking deal. And Guns yep. N' Roses were popping off. And rock was like happening. And they needed a drummer. And Don recommended me and like introduced me to the guys. And I think that they thought like it would be like a cool novelty to have this little kid in the band. Because I was probably like 17 at the time. And um, and so next thing you know, I'm like in the band. And I, uh, you know, I was like a good drummer, a good hardcore drummer. I definitely wasn't like a good like rock drummer i guess maybe or, or something but um anyway they wanted i think again they were just into like the novelty of me so immediately <laughs> in the video. so i was like all right so we'll go to film this video at uh i guess it's like a synagogue that was around on the lower east side for a while i feel like it's gone but it was no somewhere. no i think i know the place the um i shot a music video there too yeah synagogue and now it's like an art space Makes sense. Yeah, something angel there. something. Yeah, I, I shot a, a fatal video there. It's The space is still there, yes. Yeah, and they were just like, put this bandana on. I was like, okay. So I'm like wearing some like big bandana in, I think. <laughs> and then there was another video that happened quickly at the band shell, coincidentally, where we took the cover of that Youth Today record, uh, We're Not in the Salon. So we were the back band in the band shell. Band shell, band band shell in Tompkins Square Park? No, the band shell down on uh, like Avenue D and like um, with FDR Drive. Yeah, where they filmed, I think the Warriors. When they no, they they, sh they shot I think Wild Style there. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's where we took the picture for Run on Stallone. Yeah. Um, we were all walking down there, and someone was throwing bricks out the window. I did not know that. Yeah, it was cool. It was a, it was a scary day, but it was a good photo shoot. But yeah, we did the Warriors Soul video, and I remember like because again I'm lefty, so I have my ride on the left side, but they didn't like the way that that looked. So they were like, can you put your ride on the other side? So it was just all, you know, um, yeah, just for looks. But I was in the band and they were talking about going on tour with Metallica that year in Europe. So I was just like, yeah, like, let's fucking get it on. But then I got kicked out. So that was it. Back to judge. <laughs> so that that sort of leads us into um, this next. You know what? Let me let me let's let me let me play a clip of this real quick. While we're kind of at it, why not? I have it. I'm going to play a real, just a, a real quick clip of this. Um, So, so that said, right? Yeah. That was at City Gardens. We shot that in Trenton. So May May asks us for years. Judge was the band you, that said you would never get back together. What was the catalyst that made that happen? I was definitely stoked for real. I think that uh, you know Siv had been working on that for a little bit. Um, Gorilla Biscuits played B and B the year before. They covered New York Crew. He invited Mike down. It was sort of the first time Mike had been to a hardcore show in a while. I think he kind of checked out for a couple of years. 
And so for him to kind of come back and be like, fuck, there's a scene here and people give a shit. And I think that kind of started it. And Siv had been talking to him a bunch. Um, so I think that's really what kicked it off. And, you know, Pristel and myself were like always up for it. I just didn't think it was going to happen. But, you know, a lot of it was on Mike. And um, he was at a point in his, a point in his life when, um, when he was like, yeah, he was ready to, uh, to, I think he was just open to it. And just the timing. I know sometimes this shit just like, you can't force it, but some, you know, all these things come together. You know, B and B is happening. They want us yeah. to play. Sid's yeah. in. He's kind of like talking to him. You know, the guys in the band are down. There's demand. People are curious. Like, you know, Mike's in a place where he feels like he could sing the songs. Yeah. We're in a place where we can still play the songs and play them good. And we we put a lot of time in. And we, I was living in California. I was flying back. We would rehearse. We did it again. We rehearsed. It sounded good. You know, Listen, I, I was I was at those shows, man. That was that was heavy, man. We put our work in, and it's like my yeah. whole thing with these reunions is like, if you know, if you're just phoning it in, and if it doesn't sound good, and you can't play it, and the singer's not really there to kind of convey this message, or there's really no uh, attachment to hardcore or, or any of the the shit, then don't do it. But I mean, it's very real. It's not like. Yeah, I mean, we do it, and we make an effort to do it, and, and we bust our ass to make it happen. Same for Youth Today and Shelter. When these bands play, it's like we put the work in, and we go, and we're grateful there's an audience. We're grateful that we can, you know, get out there and do it, but it's, um, it's you know, it's a group effort. It takes a lot to pull together. Absolutely. Here's one from our friend Robert Hogg in Scotland. It was sad the way World Be Free Tour uh, didn't go ahead last year. I thought we were going to see, see in London hopefully one day. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, Scott uh, Scott Vogel, our singer, his back was fucked up, like really fucked up, and uh. so he um, he had some kind of issues, so we couldn't go. It's like the band. I love World Be Free, and we have a record, uh, an EP coming soon. It's gonna be fuck. It's awesome. We recorded it. It's a great band. It's like I won't say we're jinxed, but like literally, <laughs> we can't fucking get it together. I mean, we made a really cool record. Check it out. The Anti Circle. Um, Arthur from GB played on it. Alex from Chain of Strength is now in the band. And it's cool. We got all the elements. We got the logo. We got the shirt. We got the songs. We got everything. <laughs> we just can't get our shit together to play shows. But we're going to try. You know, now we got COVID, but we're going to persevere. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Tell us, so, so tell us a little bit about your involvement with Revelation Records these days and Jordan and, and what that looks like. Yeah, I've just, you know, some of them talk, and Jordan... Go, I go way back with Rev and talking to Jordan throughout the years. And he's sort of like, you know, Hey, I could really use some help and would love for you because you know, there's a few of us that just, um, yeah, I just when he and I talk, I can, I'm always thinking of like, how come you're not doing this? How come you're not doing that? Like you've got all this great shit. You've got these iconic bands, like, you know, inside out. And there's only a, an inside out t-shirt. Like I would wear an inside out fucking hat or sweatpants or something like just do more on the merch, do more on, yeah. The marketing, I just, I'm kind of wired like that. I was yeah. in advertising and marketing for a little bit, partnerships, all this shit. So one of the things I put together was the Spotify playlist. You know, it's not really rocket science, but it's just kind of like an obvious thing. And let's get different people from the community to put together these playlists. So it's been cool. I did one, Vogel did one. We got Shepard Ferry to do one the other day. Like there's a lot of- um, Nice. So just kind of creating these different like channels really and these different things and like, why not? you know, Rev could do uh, a live event series. Rev could do this, Rev could do that. So I'm kind of just taking it like one day at a time with Rev and and um, I don't know how long-term it's gonna be, but I've been there for like six months and the big one was redoing the website because the website was ancient. It had like my wow. language on it and like I had like Napster language on it. It was really wow. fucking ancient and it's, um, you know, the Rev dudes are great, but they're just, uh, it's hard when you're, doing something for so long, like 30 years to, to change and see something different. So absolutely kind of that guy that needs to get in there and say, Hey, I know you've been doing it like this, but why don't you try it like that? You know? Right. And especially in, in, in sort of the atmosphere we're living in right now, it's like, there's a lot of change in the air and yeah. you know, it, it really serves uh, a lot of people to be open to, to make, to make a couple moves and, and some change here, you know? Yeah. So just trying to, um, kind of letting that outside perspective and especially someone who played in a lot of those bands and still plays hardcore shows. Like, I feel like I could sort of speak on it a little bit. 
Yeah, well, you, you're kind of like you're really their 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 boots on the ground and your ear to, in their ear to the street these days, right? Exactly, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. Alan, the, Alan Alan Quat Sammy, what's up? What's up, Mister Quat? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's up? Uh, yeah. So that's I mean that's the rev thing. Um, and there's also cool new bands like this kid Adam Sign Drain, who's on Rev, who's a fucking great new band. And there's a band called Dare, who we just signed, who's also really good. So it's fun, like it's fun to kind of like have this, this balance of yeah, we're leveraging the old shit and we're looking at, you know, early stuff and like we're talking about doing something with even the the first Warzone seven inch and repressing that and, but also these new bands like like Brain and Dare and, and a bunch of cool ones. So it's fun. Sammy also played in the band The Unquestionable Truth. He covered when regular drummer was going through drug rehab. I've never even heard so of this. We already covered that. That was the Limp Bizkit record. The Unquestionable Truth Part One. Oh. There was never a part two. The I band see. was Limp Bizkit. The okay. record was the Unquestionable Truth Part One. Get it, people. It's that <laughs> okay, that, that makes sense. You know, this came up. Th there's a couple of shelter questions. Um sure. so so, but let me try to let me put this into one question because I saw a previous one. Uh, how was playing for shelter with the beliefs? Somebody else said, "Do you have to be into Krishna to play in shelter?" What's sort of the 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 psychology there with playing in shelter? I don't think you have to be into it. I think it's probably preferred. But um, you know, being <laughs> an open-minded, nice person like helps. Like I, again, I grew up downtown in Manhattan, so it was a melting pot of fucking Jews and Christians and Rastas and and Hare Krishnas and everything. So it's just like. The way I'm wired is I'm I'm open to it, man. To each his own, like just do your thing. And so when you know when those guys, when Ray became a Hare Krishna, at first it was a little bit threatening. And we were in Youth Today, and it was sort of like, hey, man, you're taking my friend away from me. My wow. band's gonna break up. What the fuck? And Ray, you know, I think for himself had to put up these walls because he was trying to go this path that we, you know, we were all like, don't do it. So. There was a time where it was maybe a little more like divided, I guess you could say, or maybe where he was a little more like militant in trying to convert people or to just spread his message and putting books out of chills. Um, you know, since then he's chilled a lot. And I think he's sort of too, it's like, yeah, he'll talk to you about it if you want to talk about it. But so as far as being in the band and playing the songs, like, um, you know, it's, you can be not, you don't have to be a, a Hare Krishna necessarily to do it. So. Yeah, and I saw some of those, the, some footage from those shows you played, man. You guys were like ripping, man. The in Barcelona was amazing because a kid got on stage. It's on a video somewhere, and he got on stage to do a stage dive. And as he's diving, it's the ultimate, like one of the many rules of never to do this. Grabbed the singer by the back of his jacket and basically took Ray down and Ray's singing, and all of a sudden you don't see him. And he just gets, you know, it was a close one. He recovered, but but that was a good show. I'm a singer, man. I hate when people do that. You know, I, I, I've gotten yoked. I mean, also people jump and I've been kicked in the back of the head so many times. People stage dive over your head and kick you on, on by, you know, it's like, oh, man. yeah. And technically that show was not in Barcelona. I think there's like a, I got I got my wrist slapped for that. There's a different um, shit. What's it called? It's like a different region, basically, specific. Oh. So, yeah, they take that. That's no joke over there, man. Exactly. It was like kind of Spain. Like, I know Northern Spain, like Northern Spain is like, you know, fuck right. them down there. You know, they're, they're right. like, yeah. It's like playing like Binghamton and being like, fuck yeah, New York City, we're here. It's like, yeah. <laughs> not really. It's like, no, it's like, it's like playing uh, Scotland and being like, what's up, England? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta know shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see. Um, what um what about uh you're doing a little management these days, right? Uh, tell us about the uh Narrowhead and, and Soulblind. Tell us about these two bands, where they're from and what's up. Oh yeah, Badalona, that's what it's called. Um so you know yeah, I just sort of there was a band called Narrowhead, which um a friend of mine turned me on to. And I kind of was gonna I wanted them for Revelation. I had my Revelation hat on, like, cool, we'll do a record through Rev. And in talking to these dudes, um, it just was like fuck, let's they needed a manager and I was sort of um, something I've always kind of danced with. I think it's like, you know, it's a lot of work and um, to do it, but I feel like I can help them. I've been doing this shit for a while. So 
it just seemed like the right fit. And there's a good, good, good connection. And they're, they're a cool band. They've got a record coming out. They're from Houston. Um, they have a record coming out August 28th on Run For Cover. So yeah, Narrowhead and a band called Soul Blind with my friend Ricky Singh. He and I are sort of managing that together. And again, it's just like being open to shit and trying to see where I can fit in and where, where I could help. Um, I think both bands are great and they're just like developing. So trying to help the cause. Yeah, management is a uh, is an adventure. I managed bands for uh, there you go, yo, Narrowhead Rules. Yeah, they're All good, right. man. They're really good. Um, and na- Narrowhead's from Houston, Texas, right? Yeah, from Houston, Texas. Um, people are saying they're shoegazy, but they're not really shoe. Like people used to what say, does that mean? Like, I, what, is, uh, what does that mean? I'm not familiar shoe-gazy with that term. Mean, kind of UK ish. Um, shoegazy. Shoegazy. No. Shoe-gazy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, it's funny because when we were in rival schools, everyone was like, uh, yes, the new emo band, rival schools. And we're like, we're not emo. Like, what the fuck? But <laughs> people have to, um, you know. Hey, you know, they called Tom Petty, you know, Tom Petty was a new wave band. You right. know, Elvis Costello was punk. Right. You know, I mean. I thought Rod Stewart was punk for some reason because I remember seeing Young Turks on Saturday Live. I mean, I was like 10, yeah. staying up late. And I was like, this is, or maybe the video made me think it was punk. But I sort of thought Pat Benatar was punk for a second. I mean, I yeah, guess I was ten. Listen, b- b- before I before I was thrown into the hardcore abyss, I thought the B well, I thought the B fifty twos and Blondie and Joan Jett. That was sort of what I thought was like hard hardcore punk. That's what yeah. I thought. You know, and then from there I went to like S- You know, I went from you know that to like my first SSD Control concert. You know, right. show with you know with 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 twenty kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, let's let's do something fun. Um, I'm gonna br- we're gonna bring Rap Bones and Steven back on in a well, second. Let's, talk, let's just talk about Constant Elevation for one second. Oh yeah, please. Just so please. there's a thing called Constant Elevation. I have. I, I was getting to that. Hold on. Let, let, let okay. me let me uh let's let's get a visual going here. Let's plug it. Um. Boom. Bomb. Let's talk about this. Jammy York, aka Ziggy. Mm-hmm. Um. Z Bar, old school dude. Took that. He took that photograph. It's a band that I'm doing with Vinny uh, Caruana from the movie Life and um, this guy, Mikey Ireland, and Yanni, who plays bass in Caspian. Mikey plays in I Am the Avalanche. Um, it's cool. We have a new seven inch that's coming out in Revelation. It's four songs. It's called Freedom Beach. Order it, check it out. But yeah, we had a, a seven inch that came out about a year ago, and this is the follow up. Dig it. Cool. And this is out now? No, it's coming out August 14th, but um, it's available for pre-order. Um, it's a good time. Dig it. And you said, did, Jay, did, uh, did Ziggy shoot this, this cover? Yeah, that, he took that cover. He took, the, he took the cover from the last EP as well. Um, right. we, love, we, love, we, love, we love Ziggy. He's the best, dude. We had a fun, on the last record, we had a, ran around the city and took some photos and had a good time. And um and he shoots some beautiful people, man. I want to help him out. I want to assist. I told him, hire me. Yeah, no, he's he's a he's a he he's into some cool shit. First off, he you know his photography. He does he does shoot some interesting people. And uh, for a while, he was trying to get into some. He was like trying to do some like war correspondent stuff. Yeah, which, which was pretty which was pretty pretty crazy. You know, yeah, he was doing it. Yeah, you know those war correspondent. I, I got a couple friends that are like go into these war zones to take pictures. You know what I mean? Like, fuck man. Right. You know, well, constant elevations getting some love checked out their second show at the speakeasy in long beach, long Island. That's where I think I got uh COVID. No, I didn't, but that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a cool band. It's like, it's fun. You know, I like playing all different kinds of shit, but I do. Uh, I like, you know, I'm good at hardcore, man. I play fucking hardcore drums. And so, that sort of part of the inspiration. And also I started writing some songs, like kind of just fucking around writing bass lines. So I wrote the music for the first EP um, and got uh, got Vinny to sing on it, kind of, um, I needed a singer. So he, he did it and that's kind of, again, like back to what I was saying earlier, that's sort of how this came about. It was more of just a project. Like let's, I wrote these three songs, let's put it out. And then here we are a year later with the follow-up. That seems like a lot of your projects kind of follow that, that uh... Yeah, you got to start somewhere, man. Yeah, they, yeah, they follow that that business model. You yeah, know? let's let's do a couple. Here you go, Long Beach represent. You know, we got our all our Long Island, all all our Long Island people. Hey, let me let me throw up a picture. Let me throw up. 
Throw that a shit pitch, out. A picture or two. And 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 I want you to comment on them and tell me what's going on here, okay? Okay. First one. What's up with that? Uh, Don Fury is doing backup vocals on something. Probably Judge. Me on the right. Uh, Lukey Luke. Mike Ferraro, aka Mike Judge, and Purcell. But what stands out to me is that crazy drum set that Don Fury had in the back there. I've had so many moments in that booth. Recording the Civ record, um, I threw up on myself. You ever do that? Like just kind of spit up and throw up? <laughs> I, did I did that once in there. Another time I was playing, like busting my ass playing something for Set Your Goals, and there's a light bulb above me, and it was on, and I fucking smashed it, and it just exploded, and there's just like little light bulb chips over me. So I, I have some some fond memories of that booth. And, and then that, of course, is the place down and, you know, down in the- Spring the, Street. Yeah, down. doors are open and like- um, You know, I got, I got, you know what? Hold on. I, I got that's that's I've put I've put this picture up on uh, the show a couple of times. It is it is a friggin' classic. Um, we were recording "Set Your Goals" there, and you could hear the music from the street. And we're sitting there, we're like in it, like listening to something. And this door opens a crack, and this little old Puerto Rican dude rolls in. And he just goes, "Time to party. Can I come in?" It was always <laughs> like you would always get weird shit happening. Um, dudes popping off the street down there. It was fun. That's it. That's it. I mean, that was like, that was the was it fun fact was one time I probably during the Civ record too, I went up to go use the bathroom, which was in Don's house, which was upstairs right there. And I walk into Don's house and on the couch is the woman that played Jabba the Hutt's assistant, you know, his, that girl, the green girl in Return of the Jedi. What? Yes. Sitting on the couch with Don's girlfriend. I was like, uh, excuse me, you're, um, your job of the huts. Did you know. did you did you just look at her and recognize her as that person? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Listen, cool. Don Fury. You know, as a matter of fact, um, I've been talking to Donnie lately. Uh, I got a band, uh, band. Uh, one of the, you know, we're doing the ace. We're doing these A seven shows. And we got a band of teenagers called uh, Gorilla Glue, and uh, they're a cool. bunch of kids. And you know, I called Don up. I said, Yo, Don. I, these are the keywords. You know, teenagers. New York hardcore, you know, gorilla, gorilla, weekend rate, you know, bro deal, you know, right. and he's like, he's like, yeah, come up. You guys can sleep in the studio. And yo, he still has those drums. I went up there. Uh, the guys in shelter or Ray Purcell lives sort of close. And we rehearsed there once before a tour. Um, and it was great to hang with Don and he's got a cool space in Troy. Um, he's great. I love Don. Rapone says, "Wait, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll get, we'll get. Let's get, huh? What's up? Yeah, hey, what up, Sammy? What up? <laughs> How are you, man? Rap. Yeah. So, what, what is that about, Don? What, uh, what did you call yeah, that girl? I, I recorded uh, later on. I recorded with a band called Clenched Fist, like a real at Don Fury's, and uh, we were like hanging out in his apartment. We were looking through his photos, and I saw the pictures of the Twilight girl. And he told me the whole story about out." Uh, how you know he? They, I was like, yo, I, it was like hanging out with a superstar that day just because of that. I didn't even yeah. care about Fury, right? And uh, yeah, she was the Twi'lek in the Return of the Jedi that uh, gets eaten by the Rancor. Like she falls ah. in the pit and everything. So that's like score, dude. It was good. That's it was a good sighting. Nova. That's almost Listen, getting a Nova type. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that we have a we have a professional on hand when something like this comes up and we could just bring him in totally. and just get and just really this to me that's you know, what it just shows to me uh, that's the money right there. You, you can know? Talk me back later because I got a couple questions for Sammy. Definitely all right. You could keep going, you know. Sammy always seemed like the quiet guy, but still waters run deep, man. The fact that you're still going and trying to what you know, really hammering at home. I want to talk to you guys in a little bit, so keep it All going. right, Rap Bones. We'll be back on in a minute. See you, man. Thank you. He's <laughs> great, dude. Listen, you know, we 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 keep them moving, we keep them moving in and out. I got another one here. Um, I love playing this game, you know. Tell me about well, this one, this one's okay. I'm gonna start with this because because then it there's another photo to back, back this up. But what's up with this? So that's amazing. That um, I think I took that picture, but that was our van, right? So and that's Purcell and Jay Anarchy. Um, Jay Anarchy, a.k.a. Jay Zucker, or Jay Zucker's real name, um, from Forest Hills. And Purcell in, like, Jimmy Z's, it looks like. Do you remember Jimmy Z's shorts? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. 
Um, those are some big shorts, man. But Jimmy Z's were cool at the time. But that van was was crazy. It was probably 1988. Youth Today went on the Salon tour. I feel like we might be in Cleveland there, but we could be somewhere else. And um, we were driving across country on that tour, and the back axle snapped in half. And as you can see, there was there's two loft beds. So there's one, and then there's one up high. And I was sleeping on the one up high. So if the van rolled, I would have been crushed. But we didn't roll. We just um, went off the side of the road, and then we got towed to Junction, Texas, where we spent the night. And um, that dude, Jay Anarchy, mooned this group of girls who ended up being in a church group. And then all these dudes, like Texas burly dudes, came to our hotel room and basically told us not to leave the fucking room. So we just stayed there in this one hotel room till our van was fixed and gave them all the money we had, missed two shows. And I think that the axle that they ended up giving us was fucked up anyway. So it was always something. This photo, same tour, that's my grandfather on the right. Oh. Murray. And we stayed at his house. We all went to the beach the day before and got fully sunburned. My face <laughs> blisters on it. And those dudes made fun of me and called me Freddy Krueger. Um, <laughs> I remember that my grandfather woke Priscilla up that morning. He was like, John, John, come with me, come with me. And he went and took him to get an extra key made. He was like, you need an extra key. You got an extra key. So we had an extra key. And I think he, he might have helped them get um, – like drapes or something to cover the windows so people wouldn't steal our shit. But um, that's Murray, dude. Good. More Grand, you know, grandpa came through, man. That's he did come through. And I could just see from his smile, the kind of dude he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you could just, I could just see, I could read his face here. Like, man. Yeah. Yeah. And those pants, dude. It's like, you know, yeah. he had a matching top for the, the pants too. Yeah. He's winning with those bro. And his shoes, it looks like he's got those old school kind of white, I forgot what you call those things, but those white kind of like loafer type. Yeah. Yeah. Style, dude, the, the, where Delray, or I forgot where that was in somewhere down there, South Florida. Yeah. The youth crew. Youth, youth crew van. Youth yeah, that crew. van was fucked up. I feel, I don't know who started writing on it. I think it might've started in Florida, but it just kind of, uh, it was all downhill from there. Oh, you know what? Shit. We didn't even, I didn't even mention this. And I just, and I just had Derek on the show. Yeah. Outface. Yeah. Outface is great, dude. I mean, that you know, we met those dudes playing um, in Youth of Today in a – I met them in 88 on that tour um, playing Cleveland. We played Cleveland three times that year. And um, I remember hanging out in Derek's house, his mom's house, watching movies and actually uh, making out with a girl. Listen – as a young teenage guy out there playing rock and roll, I, I, know that. Ray, I, endorse, I, en I endorse your behavior, young man. Ray Capital yelled at me. <sighs> he did. He said, I told your parents, I promise your parents I'd take care of you. Which but, means what? You can't make out with a girl? It's different times, Drew. You know, we had uh, we had uh, morals and values and shit. Oh, We're trying man. to change the world. <laughs> Boy, I don't know what I'd do if I got yelled at for making out with a girl. I, yeah. Um, you know, uh, like, I'm sorry, I got a little mixed up there. Overfiend. Yes. Was the band you were in with Derek. Overfiend was another band that never was a band. It was a project. It should have been yeah. more. It just never happened. But um, it was uh, Charlie and I and Derek and Sarah, Mother Sarah. Yeah. We had this band, and it was, like, kind of, you know, leeway, Chromax inspired. And, um, and uh, we did this, like, demo and we played a show in Staten Island. I feel like it was the only time I've ever show. played. One show you played. One show, and we rented a man with a van, and he came in a box. Give it all. Yeah. Everybody got in the back of the box truck with the fucking door closed, and we drove to Staten Island. We played with Sick of It All somewhere in Staten Island. And um, and that was it. But then Derek, you know, I don't know if that tape helped him get the Sepultura gig, but, you know, he um, he ended up joining Sepultura, and that was, and we were no longer. And he just, woo, you know, good, good, good for him, man. Derek's, yeah. Derek's a good guy, man. I had, him on, I had him on the last show. and, and He showed up at my house the other day. He bike, rode his bicycle from uh, far away and was just like, what's up, dude? I'm in your, I'm in your neighborhood. And then we well, had Far a, away, man. He's up in nor like North Hollywood. Yeah. Like, what is that? A 10 mile? Yeah, bike bro. 15 that's, or something? That's far. That's yeah. far. You could do it. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Um. Let me see one more photo and we'll bring rap bones on and let me, let me see what I got here. I want, I want to, I want to, you know what, you know what we didn't actually, I like this one here and I'll tell you why. 
Yeah. To me, I, let me tell you, I, I don't know who this other person is in the photo with you. Yeah. But looking out the window, it's like, I know where that is. It's like, is that first, it's like First Avenue and like 15th or 16th Street or, or, or is it, is it, it's not Sty Town or Peter it's Pangle, it's deceiving, but it's across the street from Music and Art from LaGuardia. Ah. And those are those projects right next to LaGuardia. And that's my friend, Max Wilker, who, um, talented artist and he's, you know, done a bunch of, of great shit. Um, but yeah, that was uh heavy skinhead moments. And, yeah. um, we would just, we would go there to pick up our friends, like my friend, Chris and Walter's brother, Dylan went there and a lot of friends, we'd go there, we'd hang out. And it was always like really dramatic. Um, what, you know, there was like other rival ga like gangs from other schools that would come down to like brawl in front of, Music and art, and it was just always yeah. fun. No, there's always that that sort of music and art, art and design, LaGuardia, you know. ABA it was sandwiched school. between Martin Luther King High School and those projects, so there was just always some shit happening. Um, but it was fun. And this is a cool photo. This uh, Steve Reddy, and um, I know that dude, but I'm spacing his name. But he's cool. And that was in like Albany, probably. Mm -hmm. Bleach blonde hair moments. I, I don't like know why that. Bleach shirts on. Yeah, let's do the bleach blonde hair days when you sort of like you color your hair halfway. You bleach it to do, so, and you never get it. So you just leave. You sort of kind of orange. Yeah, I had yeah. orange hair a couple of times. Um, you know what? Not that we're going to get deep into it, but this deal here. Yeah, that's Project X. Well, give us a little take on that. That's probably Project X, man. Um, we didn't play it many is. shows, so I don't know where this show is from. I'm that's from to Anthrax. That's the Anthrax. Okay. 1988. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, we only played a handful of shows, um, but Project X was fun, man. It was, you know, it was a project uh, for self singing. We only had a handful of songs, and uh, Walter and Alex Brown and myself. Is that is that who played all the um, Project X shows? Was it you, you, Purcell, Wally, and Alex? And Alex. When Youth of Today was in Europe in 1989, we ended up playing an, like an impromptu Project X show in Belgium, and uh -huh. Alex wasn't there. So Jordan Cooper from Revelation, who was there, we, uh, we dressed him up, and he ended up playing. He played bass, and I think Walter switched to guitar for that show. Wow! But you know, that was a unique moment. Yeah, the the, the work the work loves man. You know? ones, that was the, the the thing. That that was the thing. I, I'm sure I'm sure you always hear. You know, is there going to be a Project X reunion? You know, I mean that—that's what that people wanted. That's what you know. That's like a—that's like a black and blue. That's a bowl thing, man. We, yeah. have to, you know, even if you just come on and do like you know five or five. Alex, you know, Alex passed away, man. Like, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I think I think that's a wrap for for Project X. But uh, it was a cool band. It was a fun, you know, again just a fun chapter. Like, um, we all had nicknames. Yeah, it's like Menudo. Yeah, Straight Edge Revenge is one of the best songs ever. Fuck yeah, dude. Ever. Step to that, bro. It's it's up there with it's up there with uh Stairway to Heaven and Johnny Be Good. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm not, you know. You know, Project X, so nice record, real old school sound. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So um we're heading down the home stretch. Want to thank you for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm going to bring uh, Stephen Rapbones on. Rapbones, I'm warning you before I bring you on, bro. Don't launch into a 20 minute monologue, please. Here we go. Rapbones, Stephen Messina. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right, so Rapbones. All right, Rapbones. What do you got? Yo, 10 minute. Come so, on. Yo, listen. Yo, it's so good to hear you, Sammy, today, man. This was a good show. Like, you know, once one of somebody hits it out of the park, you know. Oh, so, shit. Uh, I, I got to tell you, it's cool. I kind of live in your old neighborhood. I live in Chelsea. And uh, it's funny because one of the uh, neighbors that I, I've gotten to know is one of your old crushes from the neighborhood, one of your old sweethearts when you were real young, like when that whole era was popping off. Her name was Monique. It's kind of funny. I thought That's that was amazing. Uh, to give her my best. Monique is amazing. Um yeah. I went to pick her up to go to the prom or something. And it was the first time I ever met her parents and her dad's a homicide detective. And her brother is a DJ who goes by the name homicide. And in the living room of their apartment, DJ homicide was just fucking scratching. And I'm like in a suit or something trying to like meet the parents and like take the date out. And uh, it was a really psychedelic time, but Monique's great. That was a, a cool chapter. 
Yeah. 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 Very fondly of you too, as well, of course. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Anything? Uh, you got anything for uh, Sammy, Stephen? I do actually. Uh, right, uh, probably one of the. Hey, last by the way, Stephen. Stephen, yeah. I love today's background. Oh, you like the cat? I, I love. The cat I, I love food? The, the yeah. cat food and the garbage can. It's. I'm glad. Listen, the art direction is top notch <laughs> today. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah. I, moved, I moved over by the window for a better signal. So. All right, bro. The, I, no, uh, I mean it. I love it. It's sort of. It's right in. It's it, it's perfect. Go ahead. It's actually not a garbage can. That's where my recyclables go. So okay. The, uh, oh, you're one of those, huh? Yeah. Well, we do that here. But right before the lockdown hit, um, one of the last great shows that I saw was the uh, Constant Elevation Indecision Gorilla Biscuits out on Long Island at uh, Revolution. There were two nights. Yeah. And uh, and I think I don't know if there was the first or second night, but that was the night. And uh, it was a phenomenal show. And um, thanks, man. It was fun. The, the other one that popped in my head as I was thinking of that, one of my all time favorite hardcore shows was uh, Sick of It All, Civ, and H2O with the Limelight. Yeah. Which uh, we've, we've actually shown pictures from that a few times here on the show. And, uh, and I don't was, know if you remember that one. I do, or, actually. I, I know. It took me a second, but I do, because we made a poster from that show. We might have been like in suits and the whole shit. Um, I do remember that show. That was good. Yeah, that was that was. Hey, I hey, love hey, the limelight. Hey, and, uh, does, does Civ play? Does the band Civ play any at all anymore? We don't really, man. I think we're having. I feel like this is the 25th anniversary, so we talked about doing something. I mean, Grill Biscuits plays, so I feel like Civ, you know, himself gets to get on stage and do GB a lot. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, but um, but yeah, but Civ, we talk about it. We just haven't really gotten around to it, but. You know, we've we've done a couple shows throughout the years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Didn't I think? Why do I remember Siv playing a benefit at the Highline Ballroom like a couple years ago? Maybe with the Chromags. Or yes. Something? Yes. That was yes. the. Uh, it was a fuck cancer benefit. I was at that with nine yeah. lives. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. That was like four years ago, maybe something like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more now. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. That was a, that was a great show, actually. Rap Bones, you got anything else for Sammy? No, I got one last thing for Sammy. Uh, I was. Yeah ask you about since you and lukey luke were so young i mean obviously you were best friends right like you had plenty of times when you toured together and right you bonded you were best friends yeah so i'm not even gonna ask that one because you already covered that but uh, uh what about uh detroit like the you were on the tour in 88 in detroit when uh you did today you were on that tour and you played blondies right yeah so what, you know, what are your memories of Detroit? And I mean, those, those times we don't realize because you guys kind of have a, a time when it was skinhead and punk and bro core was all one thing. You know, Guar, Gigi Allen, we'd go see all that too. And we'd go see all the straight edge bands. So we're like always the same. Yeah, I think like, I mean, 88 going to Detroit, I was 15. And so, um, you know, like it just kind of all seemed natural at the time. But looking back, it was fucking crazy because – Blondie's was in a really sketchy area. There was a great scene, really diverse. There was an all vegetarian soul food restaurant. <laughs> and that was like Seventh Day Adventist or something, maybe. But it was like, you know, vegetarian food back then was not easy to come by. This was like a soul food restaurant, all veg. So we were fucking stoked. Um, but yeah, there's one time, you know, we bought all these fireworks and we, were, we had to go to Canada the next day. So we had to get rid of all of our fireworks. So Luke and Priscilla and I and a bunch of kids in the neighborhood got into this like daylight Roman candle bottle rocket war. I just like, you know, I have a lot of fond memories, man. And then, you know, even later playing, um, I guess like when I was in Nightmare Review and probably rival schools and Civ, we played St. Andrews and that place underneath St. Andrews. So I have a lot of love for Detroit. I never really understood Detroit though, because everyone, it's like, I guess it was sketchy. So a lot of people lived in the suburbs, right? Yeah. So we would like, it was one of these cities like I couldn't get my head around. As a New Yorker, I'm like, where do you fucking live? Like, where do you hang out? Like, do you nobody, hang out in the city nobody, or do you not? People left the city. Nobody was – not many people that were living in the actual city. They come into work or whatever, right. and then they moved, they went to the suburbs. Right. Absolutely. Detroit. Yeah, and did, but Detroit, right now, Detroit now is sort of is, – is, is changing. Detroit's on the up and up a little bit right now. Yeah, there was that, that gambling kind of street by St. Andrews. They had an Ethiopian restaurant. We'd always go to the right, Ethiopian right. restaurant. But, like, I was always like this gambling thing had this, like, mini Vegas vibe. So I was just like, I was like where am I? Like, what the – what? where would I hang – if I lived here, like, where would I chill? But I, I think I've heard nothing but good things. Um, 
and, you know, and since, but. Cool. But yeah, I took that photo though of you with Mike and Purcell in our van on that judge tour, probably 89. I remember meeting you there and being like, this kid has a tattoo around his neck. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> Crazy. Cool. Well, hey, uh, that was a great show. Um, Rat Bones, Steven, yeah. um, listen, I'll see you guys soon. And yep. uh, I'll see you on Sunday. Steven, you got to send me pictures. We yeah, got the got big, homework. We got the big photographer show. Uh, let me just remind everybody that coming up this Sunday is the New York Hardcore Firing Squad. And this is going to be a cool show. We're going to show a lot of pictures. And uh, we're going to get into a lot of cool stuff at this, uh, with this show. So uh, tune in. Uh, this is this coming Sunday. And it's going to be my last show here in Florida. Coming back to New York City, back to the command center. I think so far, I think so far everything was cool. Unfortunately, my dad's house phone didn't ring today. We we're always hoping for that. We love that. But uh, Stephen, send me some pictures. Uh, thank you. And Rap Absolutely. Bones, you guys are really a big part of what makes this sh show great. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. And Sammy, so thank you guys, man. Sammy, before I jump, I just want to say, man, it's really uh, – you know, the way he's still in the mix, man, doing so many different projects and like still like believing in things like that. It's really, you know, we're still here. We didn't go anywhere. So, yeah, all the things we believed in are happening now, you know, you know, and, uh, right back at you, man. Like you're doing both you guys and you, know, you guys are all doing your part. And it's um, as Siv told, you know, he's like talking about how um, Judge came back. I think Siv was telling Mike, like, you got to show up, man. You got to fucking if you want this thing to continue, you got to, you know, contribute and show up. So I'm just like trying to contribute where I can and, and what, what feels right and makes sense. Absolutely, man. That was great seeing you, brother. Cool, man. Be good, bro. Drew, where'd Drew go? Now we got to carry the show. What's up, everybody? I don't know. What do we do now? Do we no, do I, you know what I did? You know what I did? <laughs> this is what I did. Because, because people, <laughs> I panic. Uh, no, I'll tell you what, what happened. No, there, there's a met. No, I'll tell you, this is funny. Um, people said, where's Jim? And then somebody else said, yeah. did I miss Jim? So while you guys were talking, I got up, I ran in the other room and I got Jim. Damn. I got Jim. And Jim says, yo, I watched, I watched the room. I watched the show from the other room. It was dope. Thank you, everybody from around the world that supports this show. You fucking rule. Jim, so, Jim looks better. Like, he's healthier now. I don't know, man. He's He doesn't look so decrepit as he did. He's okay. If, if my if, if my dad if my dad gets his hand if my dad gets his hands on him, he's gonna throw him right the fuck out. He's like, throw that thing, throw that thing out. So, you know. Rap Bones, I'll talk to you soon, man. Uh, guys, have a great – I mean, you could go on with uh, Sammy for another half hour, man. So do your thing. It's been a great show so far. So keep it rolling. All cool. right. Take care. Thanks, Sammy. Thanks, bro. Woo. Well, there you go. What a workout, huh, buddy? Just doing it. Just getting on. It, it, it was great. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great. Sure. I love you. You always have a home here, man. Right on, brother. You too, man. I'll see you soon. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll be back in New York soon. If you're back in New York or if I'm, back, if I'm out in Venice visiting my brother. And, you know, do, do you still do those things? I mean, when was the last time you did the thing that, that in, in the uh, in the good idea? I just can't get my shit together to keep doing it. But I did this thing called I'm On Board, which you, know, you guys should YouTube or whatever. Switch it, but it's called I'm On Board. Um, and it's talking shit with Vern Laird and Scott Weingard and Walter in a rowboat. And the idea was of a uh, conversation in a rowboat. And I had this idea before fucking Seinfeld had his – Canadians and car shit, but um, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. I just I need to do it. I just need to fucking make it happen. Hey, if you um, if you do it again, let me know. It'd be great to do one with the Stone Brothers, me and my brother. The and, idea uh, was to do it like I want to do it like in the Gowanus. I want to do it like in different oh, cities. I see the water. Like it really. The idea was it to, for it to move. You know, wherever that person is. You know, and um, you're I need a good, you're a good idea, man. I got. I think you and I both kind of gel on that. But if yeah, somebody wants to fund it out there, like give me a shitload of money to do it. I would love. <laughs> to do it. You're you're like a great idea man. You know you you have you have a lot of a lot of ideas. But listen, everybody loved the show. It was a great cool. time today. Thank you. I'll My talk pleasure. to you. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. All right, I'm out. Take care. Bye bye. Peace.
Well, there you go. Uh, great show. Uh, it's the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Today was sponsored by Fryette Amplification, New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill. Coming up soon as our next bunch of sponsors, we got Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards and the Texas Silver Rush. Also want to shout out Pitchfork, uh, our good friends, Warren, Warren and them. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, that said, let me say my goodbyes to everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Thomas in Switzerland. That was a great show. Um, what's this? Got the A7 shirt today. Bro, I sent you that fucking shirt like a month ago. Touchdown in Valhalla. I love it. It rules. Holy, holy mackerel. I, Steen, I sent you that shirt. Um, what was that? That was at least a month ago. It, like a month and a half ago. Man. Hi, Gina. I hope you're well, hon. Uh, Chris Hoffman, great show. Thank you. Listen, the show's great because you guys make it great. Being able to interact with you guys and have this community and culture that we have, it's everything. It brings, it's what makes the show. So, so there you go. Um, thanks a lot, everyone. It, it, it was a great day, a great show. We'll see you on Sunday. Uh, Nick Riley, Patrick Doyle, rest in peace. I hope this show did you justice. Do good things and good things will come to you.